All right, everyone. Hey, today I'm going to do a quick little demo on servicing this engine coolant. Um, in a previous demonstration, we found that the freeze protection level in our LAD 2000 Toyota Tacoma was not where it needed to be. It was only good to about zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we do not have a proper mixture in there. We need to get this mixture closer to a 50-50 water and a freeze mixture so we have the proper coolant mix and we have the proper freeze protection. We want to get it down to about minus 34 degrees, which is roughly about 50-50 of a mixture. Um, so we're going to go ahead and walk you through the steps of doing that today. Now, this is not a cooling system flush. Um, that's the difference. There's a couple ways to do that. Um, a coolant system flush, in a lot of shops, they use a coolant flush machine. You warm the vehicle up. Um, you hook the machine up to it, you warm the vehicle up, let the thermostat open, and the flush machine pumps new antifreeze in and old antifreeze and coolant back out so it flushes the entire system. Another way to do that is to drain the system, um, flush it with a T-valve and the heater hoses or by flushing it through the radiator with a garden hose and some flush chemicals um, of that nature. But we're not doing that today. We're not doing a full flush. We're just going to do a routine service of a drain and fill. Now remember, you never get all of the stuff out of the system. So when we refill this, we're gonna be very careful with our mixture to try and make sure we get it to that 50-50 mix as close as possible, all right? So this could be something that you do, this vehicle recommends every 30,000 miles that you do a drain and fill. So if you do this every 30,000 miles, you should be good. This may be something that you're gonna do in a situation like right now with us. We don't necessarily have 30,000 miles on this vehicle since the coolant's been changed but we have the incorrect mixture. So we're gonna try and fix that by doing a service, all right? So I'm gonna get you guys set up. We're gonna look down here. And so I'm gonna get you guys down. On this vehicle here, we have what they call a petcock down here. It's just a drain valve and it's all the way down at the bottom. So let's see if I can reach under here and you guys can see it. Right here is the drain valve. And I actually think the upper radiator has it in your way where you can't see it. So let me move the camera a little bit. Right down in there is the drain valve on this radiator. All right, so we're gonna turn that drain valve down there. Gonna get a better view. There's your drain valve. So we're just going to open that up, drain it to our pan down here, and properly dispose of the antifreeze. All right. So one thing you want to do, obviously, we're going to make sure this is cool. I had it running earlier this morning. It's cooled down now after lunch. There's no pressure on the system. I'm going to go ahead and crack the cap here. Remove the radiator cap. Um, I'm going to set this off to the side. The reason we want to do this is it's going to make this radiator drain a lot easier. It's kind of like trying to use a gas can without opening the vent on it. It's not going to flow very well. This will also prevent siphoning from the overflow bottle. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't crack this open. And we are draining. All right, that's all there is to it. Now we have to play the weight game. Lift this drain, and then we can go from there. All right, so hang tight. We'll pick up once this drains a little bit. All right, everybody, while this is draining out of the radiator, we're doing our drain and fill to correct the freeze protection on our lab Toyota Tacoma. I want to review some antifreeze stuff with you, all right? I know we've talked about this before, but there are different types. This one, for example, 
this is an all makes and models we have here since we have all makes and models that does not mean that you can just go ahead and grab this and dump this and top this off on any vehicle out there that is not what this means you always need to read the instructions on the back carefully if you read the instructions on the back of almost any of these one size fits all coolant it's going to tell you that a complete drain fill and flush or a drain and flush is required so this one back here it says drain to remove rust sediments from radiator closed radiator valve flush to clean engine block fill with clean water and cooling system flush cleaner run engine with heater on high until it reaches operating temperature stop the engine allow it to cool drain the cooling system again close radiator drain valve do this until clean clear water is seen all right then it tells you to mix it so where people get confused on this is they think oh all makes of models i have orange in my gm truck it doesn't matter this is all makes of models i can just pop it off of this that is incorrect that's where people get in the trouble now you're mixing coolants that might not be or should be mixed together you can cause them to react improperly um, and actually do more damage than good so when you see a one size fits all on a bottle it's never one size fits all completely you got to read the instructions the reason it's an all makes and models is if you completely flush all the cooling the old coolant out of the vehicle then you can refill the system with this all right we also have an all makes and models one size fits all antifreeze coolant extended life concentrate all right once again just because it says all makes and models doesn't mean i can just take this and dump this right into my extended life dex cool gm vehicle necessarily if you look at the back it'll tell the same thing to realize the protection of this antifreeze complete a cooling system flush as required and it gives you the step-by-steps here again so if you just want to top off a vehicle you need to find an antifreeze that is acceptable for the specific vehicle you are using if you're adding to it so if i was adding to my chevy silverado and it takes a dex cool gm antifreeze i need to go to the store and find an antifreeze that says dex cool compatible all right not just an all makes and models and dump it in. So be very careful about that. What we're going to do is we're using a concentrate, not a pre-diluted. So this is all antifreeze. We actually have to take and mix a half and half mixture in here. So we're going to take and make a 50-50 mix in one of these bottles. The first bottle, when we go, I'm actually going to pour the first half of straight antifreeze in there in hopes to compensate for any of the incorrect water mixture that is in the rest of the system. So we'll go from there. All right, hang tight. We're gonna let this finish draining. We'll go from there. All right, so as you can see, we have this with the antifreeze coolant mixture in it. We have the vehicle started. We are letting the vehicle warm up to operating temperature so we can get the thermostat open. We're watching bubbles still come up out of it. Something that I like to do while this is happening is I like to squeeze the upper radiator hose periodically. And as you can see, now that does help push out maybe some air out of the system. Be very careful when you're doing this though because lots of moving parts are here. Number one, this is all getting hot because the temperature is rising in the engine. But you also have moving belts, pulleys, cooling fans, things like that right here that you do not want to get tangled up in. So just be very conscious of where you're putting your hands and leaning and touching things, okay, while you're doing this. Um, I don't want you guys to get hurt. The only thing we can do is I like to speed the throttle up periodically. As you can see, that helps bring some bubbles up. Speeding the water pump up. And as that water pump speeds up, it's going to push the coolant a lot faster. Periodically, 
I'm gonna go in and check the gauge to see about if it's at operating temperature. An ideal situation if you're a technician in a shop, what I like to do, I don't have it set up out here for you today, because I'm kind of just showing you a way that you can do this in a shop, you can do this at home on your own vehicle. Um, but normally what I would do is I would have a scan tool set up right here and I could have the data on the screen and I could watch the coolant temperature sensor to see precisely if it's up to operating temperature or not. All right, so let me go check the gauge one. And yes, the vehicle is up to operating temperature. The heat, I still have the heat on because remember we wanted to have the heater on to open the heater control valve to circulate coolant through the heater core so we don't have an air pocket trap. With that said, heat is blowing out of the dash. Very, very good right now. Um, the inside of the truck is very warm. So we know that's good. Chances are we have all the air out of this, but I'm just gonna check it one more time. Still see a little air bubbles. Like we have all the bubbles out of the cooling system. Next, we need to shut the vehicle off and remove our funnel setup here. Be careful. Sometimes, if there's still a little air pocket in here and you shut that off, this may bubble up. So, you want to be very careful. All right. Also, remember. Just because you turn the engine off, some electronic cooling fans may still turn on if it thinks it needs to. Um, the computer and the engine control module may control it on if it sees temperature at different, you know, in different parameters in the data. So you want to make sure that you don't keep your hands anywhere near here just in case. Some people are under the assumption that just because they turn the vehicle off, that this isn't going to come on. Some vehicles it's possible, so just be prepared, be careful. So there's a little bit of coolant left in here. So to get this out, I'm gonna show you guys a trick. The spill-free funnel setup comes with the block off. So we're gonna take the block off, pull that out. And as you can see, very, very minimal mess. Now, I'm just gonna take the rest of this and put into another jug and drain it back into our mixture of our jug. We can reuse it later or top off our overflow with it. All right. Now, be careful, this is going to be hot. We need to remove this setup here. Pull our adapters out very carefully. Set our adapters off to the side. Make sure our radiator looks full, which it does. We are going to get our radiator cap. Make sure it looks okay and install. I'm not going to do it on this video today. You'll see another video of testing the cooling system for leaks, testing the pressure cap for uh, proper function. But it's always a good idea while you're doing any sort of cooling system service before and after you're done. So in this circumstance, after we've done this, drain and fill to correct our freeze protection problem. It's a good idea to go ahead and pressure test the radiator cap, make sure it's in good operating condition, pressure test the system and recheck for leaks. Um, if you don't have a pressure tester at home and you're doing this, at bare minimum, what you should do is run this after the cap's back on, let it build up some pressure, check around the petcock drain to make sure that it's not leaking or anything like that. Now, something that we need to do before we're finished here is we need to go back and we want to check the freeze protection because that was the whole point of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and grab our hydrometer. And remember, hydrometers are kind of going wayside. 
Um, now manufacturers are recommending the use of a refractometer, pH strips, um, things like that. But we're still going to use a hydrometer on this little bit of an older vehicle to take a sample, get it up to the fill line. I can get this up here for you guys. And as you guys can see, now we are at a minus 34, roughly around a minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit freeze protection, right where we need to be. So draining and filling the system and topping off the correct mixture has solved our freeze protection problem. All right, just wanted to verify that for you guys. Bring that back into there. We'll clean this off later. Put our cap back on. And make sure that we... This coolant overflow bottle is dry. But if there was any of the old coolant in here, you want to take... Either remove it and dump the stuff out and clean it out. Or if you have some sort of a tool to extract this, a suction tool to extract that out, I would extract that out. And then what we need to do is top off the overflow to the full mark. With our 50-50 mixture. And there we are. Okay. Yeah, looks like we're right at the marks. So yeah, we're good to go. All right, the last thing we need to do before we are done with this job and close the hood is we need to clean up any mess that we have. So we did pretty good with our spill-free funnel, but we still have a little bit of antifreeze around here. We want to make sure we clean all that up the best we can so we don't get confused and think we have a leak in the future. So I'm just gonna use some clean water here. Rinse that off. And also make sure you rinse off down around where you're draining. All right. When you're done, always make sure you dispose of your used antifreeze coolant mixture properly following all EPA guidelines. Here we have out in our shed, we have waste oil drums and we have waste antifreeze drums. That's where this is going to go. Dump it in the waste antifreeze drum. It's yellow and then Safety Clean will come take care of it for us. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Check back later. Portman out.